Hi, I'm Dr. David Cody, and this is Dr. Pippa Watson. In this video, we'll be giving you a background to the REMS examination and the general principles that should be followed when carrying it out. Regional examination of the musculoskeletal system refers to the more detailed examination that would be expected once an abnormality has been detected through either the history or the GAL screen. It's important to consider undertaking a detailed neurological and vascular examination of all joints within that region. For the purposes of this video, the examination has been divided into the following areas. Hand and wrist, elbow, shoulder, hip, knee, foot and ankle and spine. It should be remembered that this is an artificial divide and that the examination of the shoulder, for example, should often be done alongside cervical spine examination. The following general principles should be followed during the examination process. Firstly, introduce yourself to the patient. Explain to the patient what you're going to do. Gain verbal consent to examine. Ask the patient to let you know if you cause them any discomfort during the examination. Look. So look for skin changes, scars, muscle bulk and swellings in and around the joint. Also look for deformity in terms of alignment and posture of the joint. Always compare one side with the other. Feel. Feel for skin temperature across the joint line and other relevant sites. Assess swellings for fluctuance and mobility. This is also where a vascular and a neurological assessment should be made. It's important to look specifically for synovitis using the triad of warmth, swelling and tenderness. If present, this is highly suggestive of inflammatory arthritis. Move. The full range of movement of the joint should be assessed both actively and passively. It's important to understand the difference between these. Active movement is the patient moving the joint themselves, relying on their muscles, tendons and nerves. Passive movement is where the examiner is doing the movement on behalf of the patient. If there's a difference between these two, it's most likely to indicate a problem with nerve, tendon or muscle function. These examinations will allow you to detect a loss of movement or a degree of extra movement known as hypermobility. Function. It's important to make a functional assessment of the affected joint to demonstrate whether limited movement of the joint causes any difficulty with daily activities. Special tests. Finally, a number of special tests may be used by specialist clinicians. A few of these are included in the sections that follow, but practitioners will build up their own bank of additional tests as they gain experience.